Hey there, boys and girls. How you doing out there? Welcome in. It's another installment of the Daily Detroit Happy Hour podcast, and I am delighted to have you on board with us today once again. I'm Sven Gustafson. I'm your host. Next week, Thursday, April 19th, is the 25th annual Women's Power Breakfast at Little Caesars Arena. It's a fundraiser and a gathering of top female leaders from the corporate, civic, and nonprofit worlds. Also kicks off the Million Meal Match, which is a month-long campaign through May 22nd that aims to raise enough money to provide one million meals for hungry children across southeast Michigan. Daily Detroit is a media sponsor of the event, and I've got two guests today joining us in the podcast Detroit studio to talk about the campaign and the issue of hunger and children. Bridget Brown is Director of Development with Gleaners Community Food Bank, which is uh, putting the fundraiser on. And Luann Thomas-Ewald is CEO of Children's Hospital of Michigan. She's also a co-chair of the Women's Power Breakfast. Bridget and Luann, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having us. Thanks for having us. We're so happy to be here and talk about this. Absolutely. And and God bless you for braving the the (laughs) April snows out there. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. You guys uh, ready for spring? Oh, I wish it were, yeah, last month. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So um, let's start off by talking a little bit about um, the uh, issue of, of uh, hunger in Michigan. Um, Bridget, uh, you're probably a good person to answer this question. How big of a problem is hunger in southeast Michigan? So we have nearly 700,000 people that are in need and need food, don't know where their next meal is coming from. Um, specifically, we know that 300,000 children need our help every single day. So what this Million Meal Match program helps us to do is collect enough financial, you know, financial contributions, food generally also, and allows us to feed feed those kids. Um, I mean, that's a substantial number. You can't really fathom it in your head if you think about it. Um, but a lot of kids are going home on the weekends and they don't have you know, food for Saturdays and Sundays. And then we have summer coming up and I know it's spring, but we have to think about what's coming just a couple months away. And a lot of our our kids in Metro Detroit don't have an option for food during the summer. Mm-hmm. And when you mentioned that about the weekends and, and facing that glut, you're talking about because school and the role that that provides in, in feeding hungry kids. Absolutely. So a lot of our students get breakfast and lunch, but um, they're left with dinner. Most of the time, the parents can help with that, but they might have very little food. So then when it comes to the weekend, they don't have breakfast, lunch, or dinner for either day. So really, Gleaner steps forward and, and kind of acts as that uh, link between donors and and um, the schools and the students that actually need it to make sure that the f- food is where it needs to go. Mm-hmm. So um, the uh, Women's Power Breakfast is the 25th uh, annual um, version of the event. Um, mm-hmm. So y- it's got quite a history. Talk a little bit about that, uh, if you could. Yeah. So every single year we have very strong and powerful women come together, much like Luann here. <laughs> We're super excited to have her about. Um, but Really, I mean, women are nurturing figures, and a lot of them are mothers. And to bring them together for our mission and and feeding hungry kids specifically at this time of year really means so much. And that's that's what it started at as as year one um, with a simple breakfast, but some networking to kind of get women together and really excited about the the event and being able to help their community. To this year as the twenty fifth year, where we'll have over six hundred guests come to to this event um, and really be able to network and meet the most powerful women in our area. And what a great time to have our 25th anniversary, too. (laughs) I should also mention that uh, donations during the Million Meal Match campaign, which runs from uh, April 19th through May 22nd, are... April 17th. So next Tuesday. Yes, Ah. we're sorry. But yes, absolutely. And we are very excited because um, normally $1 is three meals, but this time it one dollar will actually be six meals, um, mostly because of our match sponsor PNC, but also um, Delta Children's, many other people that are helping us match those donations that come through the community. So we're pretty excited. Million meal match, woohoo! <laughs> That's great. That's great. Uh, Luann Thomas Ewald, um, tell us. I mean, you're the head of a of a big, you know, major children's hospital right here in Detroit. Um, how does hunger sort of? Like, how do you come at the issue of hunger? Is this a, is this a significant issue among your patient base there? Um, it, it is a very significant issue throughout Southeast Michigan. And um, we, we saw children, especially in the summer and on weekends, 
come in with health conditions, but we also, our nurses also noticed that they were hungry. And so obviously um, part of the healing process, you need to have healthy nutrients to help heal the body with whatever ailment um, a child may have. But our nurses were noticing, you know, a high level of food insecurity within our kids. And, um, you know, the, the, the beauty of that story is our nurses, a couple nurses got together to say, how can we combat this? How, how can we help these kids? And, you know, they immediately partnered with Gleaners. And last year, at, with the Gleaners Children's Hospital Michigan Cereal Drive, we raised 1.5 million servings of cereal for kids throughout the summer. Sadly, it was gone very quickly. So um, over the past couple years, we've raised about 4.5 million servings, but we know we need to do more. So this year, we kick off the first week in June for our cereal drive. Um, and, you know, obviously, we're going to set our goal well above 1.5 million. Um, I think the first year, we had almost 300,000 servings, and we yeah. thought we were great, and the cereal was gone within weeks. So yeah. we, we have a lot of work to do. And we just want to make sure these kids, you know, they can come into the hospital, we'll make them feel better and send them home. But we need to make sure that they have the food they need to be able to grow, go to school, um, learn, not have anxiety, because mm -hmm. we know all of these things happen when they're when they're hungry. Yeah. I mean, uh, hunger is, I mean, it's one thing, it's bad enough, um, but it also has a lot of uh, associated sort of health and and kind of psychological implications too, right? It does. There, You know, there are studies that show, you know, there's greater aggression, greater anxiety, um, that children don't perform well in school. They don't sleep well. Um, so there are a lot of behavioral uh, social issues that occur because the kids, first of all, are hungry, but then there's also the anxiety about about eating. Mm -hmm. um, I see that it it also has been linked to an increased risk of uh, obesity, right? And that seems kind of counterintuitive. I mean, if you're hungry, how does that lead to an increased risk for, you know, becoming obese? Because when, they're, when there is food or when they are, are around food, um, they will eat as much as they can. Mm. And mm. a lot of times it's not healthy food. Mm. Um, so you've com you, you combine those two things and uh, the result is is obesity. And as we all know, we are seeing an increase in obesity um, in areas of poverty as well. So mm -hmm. they're going to, you know, cheap food, um, fast food, which is why we love our cereal drives, because mm -hmm. we are providing kids with oatmeal, um, healthy cereals that, you know, you don't need. You can have with water. You can have with milk. Um, a lot of our, our sponsors that have jumped on, like Kroger in the past, have actually provided the milk. So um, we just have really, really good partnerships all over town. Mm. Yeah, so she hit it on the head. I mean, a lot of our clients go to gas stations to get their food for the day. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not something that I can even like picture in my mind, let alone have to do. Um, so when they have cereal drives or when they have initiatives like this Million Meal Match, it really helps us make a difference in the lives of these kids. And this Million Meal Match, I should mention, is also part of our um, making investments in the lives of kids movement, which is short, you know, milk, milk movement. Uh, Love that, I, I, of course. <laughs> but really what that what that entails and what that means for us as a food bank is that we'll be able to provide nutritious, healthy meals for every child that we're able to work with throughout the school year, throughout the summer, you know, really make a difference in their future. Mm -hmm. Bridget, tell us a little bit about um, Gleaners. You guys have a um, fairly long history, uh, mm -hmm. and I know you're like headquartered over on the east side, not too far from yeah. uh, the Capuchin Soup Kitchen. Right? right. We're actually like right across the street, which is pretty cool. They're our largest partner, so we're really fortunate and lucky to be able to work with them so closely. But uh, yeah, this is Gleaners' 41st year, um, so we're pretty excited to be getting into that just this April, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and then... Uh, we have five different locations. So you mentioned the one that's in Detroit, but we also have a location in Warren, Pontiac, Howell, and uh, Taylor as well. Mm. So we're kind of all over the place, and we do have a five-county region. So um, for the most part, those locations are kind of dispersed throughout. But, um, you know, Min Monroe, M Macomb, Wayne, Oakland, and Livingston counties are, are our entire service area. So when when you do give a dollar, yes, a lot of it, a lot of the children in need are in Detroit, but that's not all of them. They're actually across all of Metro uh, Metro Detroit in southeastern Michigan, just like Luann said just a minute ago. And it's um, pretty incredible when you when you look at the span and families can be in need 
for a lot of different situations. So right. we're really grateful for anyone that helps out. And d- does Gleaners, um, do you supply other like agencies that, that directly distribute the food or do yes. you also do direct distribution to the clients? Uh, so both. Mm-hmm. So we have about 500 partner agencies. Many of them are your typical soup kitchens, um, churches that might distribute food. So you just mentioned Capuchin Soup Kitchen, just like them. Um, but we also partner with schools directly. So we have now 87 schools that we work with to actually bring food to their site that's enough for the whole family. So they'll get their grains, their protein, their produce, um, lots of produce because we're really focusing on the healthy eats. But we're hoping to also include fresh milk at some point Mm -hmm. within that distribution. Um, Not only do we have those 87 schools, but you also have um, over, I I believe it's 69 schools that we provide the backpack program. So that's where we deliver. Um, We work with the teachers and actually provide um, food for them for the weekend throughout the school year. And then we run uh, two of our own pantries as well. Um, who are then uh, y- your clients? I mean, the, the people who um, use the food, who, who yeah. need to eat. I so mean, what's the talk face about your, of hunger? Yeah, your average profile kind of thing. Um, yeah, I wish there were an average. But to be honest with you, um, it's everyone from the, the baby that needs the proper nutrition, as Luann, I'm sure, can give us many, many stories about, to the, the elderly person that um, is on a fixed income and can't afford to feed themselves. Um, so I, I wish there was an average because then we'd be able to really focus more more on access and providing those specific people. But it's all across the board. It's all across the board. And it can be anything from just a you're not making enough money and you've got a family to feed to you had a family tragedy. And this actually happened recently where um, I also oversee a pantry and a mom came in and she was very flustered. And, you know, I I wanted to to talk to her to try to help her find the resources she needed. It was her first time there. Um, She had three kids and her husband passed away. Well, Okay, that's not something that any of us really prepare for. And if you are living paycheck to paycheck, which many of us are, Mm. you aren't going to be able to make ends meet. Um, And that's where we step in. That's where we provide emergency services and services to families, really families, um, that can use our help, whether it be a little or a lot. Do you have uh, like regular um, clients or customers? I don't know what you call them, but, Mm -hmm. you know, you point to them and you can say, we really help them and we put them on a sustainable path and they're they're doing better now. And, and- we have some beautiful stories that come from our client base. Um, people that are now donors that used to receive from us and say, you know, I finally finished my education. I'm on a better track right. or I got through my situation or I got a new job or whatever it might be. Um, and that's really an, an amazing thing to hear. I'm fortunate I get to hear them more frequently than others. But, um, you know, when we provide emergency food, it's meant to be emergency food. Not everybody has that ability. Mm-hmm. Often, you know, we, we do serve working families. There are people that are working and still can't make ends meet. And that's a really important thing to to get across. And I mean, I don't know if you have any additional pieces to say. Yeah, that, you know, but. we, you know, and, and our partnership is, is so awesome because when our social workers or our nurses mm-hmm. notice that there are families in need, um, we have a partner that we can reach out to and we, you mm-hmm. know, we really connect them with gleaners. And the one thing that was, um, you know, shocking to me is I actually took my own kids um, to Gleaners to volunteer to stuff the backpacks. And um, that day they were delivering back- backpacks to Birmingham and Royal Oak mm. and Rochester and Rochester Hills. And so when not, she says not hunger, you would think of correct. Yeah. And mm-hmm. when she says, right. you know, hunger doesn't really have a face. Um, and there were for all different situations, death, um, job loss, uh, temporary, some not temporary. Mm-hmm. So I think, you know, that that's why we at Children's Hospital love gleaners, because they, you know, there there isn't a face. So whatever the need may be, um, they're our partner in, in trying to solve this problem. Right. And uh, Luann, you mentioned uh, taking your kids to gleaners to, to volunteer. Yeah. Volunteers is uh, hugely yeah. important to you. Right? Oh, yeah. We <laughs> have uh... want to throw out a pitch for that. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if you want to volunteer, we take volunteers at each and every site, including, you know, also we have events that you can volunteer at. We need 48 over 48,000 volunteers every year to accomplish what we need. So something we so. did last year is, you know, we raised 1.5 million servings of cereal and, you know, with the, um, we went to this, our nurses and our whole team at Children's Hospital and said, you know what, now we're going to go stuff these boxes mm-hmm. at Gleaners and we're going to take a morning and we're going to leave the hospital and, and do that. So now every year 
it's sort of our it's it's our event of the hospital where and we know other companies do that as well. We see as we're leaving, other companies are coming in. So it's just a really great thing for companies to get involved. It's very easy. It's oh, a yeah. couple hours. Um, and it's 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 so rewarding. We do put you to work. You know? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, Tennis least. shoes and jeans for sure. <laughs> yeah. It's it's great for team building. I mean, it, it if is. your family wants to get together and come down on a Saturday, we have opportunities. I mean, yeah, we, we need help and and we use all the hands that yes. are provided. Yeah, I was there once. I remember, uh, you know, uh, picking up a lot of um, flats of, you know, canned goods or whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of lifting, sorting. Absolutely. Stacking. <laughs> yes. Yep. Sounds like you're very familiar. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right. So uh, next week is the Women's Power Breakfast. It's Thursday, April 19th. You got it. Two yes. days after the Million Meal Match Begins. Begins. Correct. Yep. Yep. Um, so tell us about the event uh, and why you know people listening out there should consider buying a ticket. Luann, you're a good person. You're co-chair. Yeah. Of the power, um, power and breakfast. so yeah. So I'm co-chairing with Julieta Cotiebo, senior vice president at MGM Grand. She and I have been uh, friends for years. So it's just a natural fit for both of us on the 25th anniversary to, to chair this event. And it is really you know it's really the kickoff event for the spring. Um, any female executive. Um, in town is there. Um, it's a great networking opportunity. And, you know, and we are all coming together for this common cause. And when, you know, more than <laughs> two women get together, a lot of things happen. And so we're really excited. You know, the 600 plus women, um, it, it is a fundraiser. It's also an awareness raiser. Um, we want to make sure that people understand, um, you know, what our kids are going through in this day and age and how all of us together can collectively help them. So um, it, it really is the kickoff of spring for a lot of the female executives in town. So and we're just really excited. It's at Little Caesars Arena this year. Um, so mm -hmm. we, we can't wait. Any speakers or anything like that? Um, Tanya Allen. Uh, from uh, um, Skillman Foundation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. She will be the keynote speaker. And we're, you know, we're obviously thrilled to have her, her whole Life and cause is dedicated to the betterment of children, um, as is mine. So um, it, it was just a great fit. Excellent. And uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask. It's a women's power breakfast, but you got it. Uh, boys allowed? <laughs> very few, very, very few. selective, and your ticket price is way higher. <laughs> oh, man. All right. But makes sense, right? So, um, yeah, we we do still have some tickets. Um, our focus is women. If gentlemen want to come along, um, that's okay. But like I said, ticket price is higher. Um, but um, it's $125 per ticket. Um, if you're under the age of 35, we do have a slightly discounted rate so that you can get out there and start networking and really make a difference in our in our mission today. And then uh, you've got a happy hour event that kind of bookends yeah. the other side of the million meal match. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about that. Yeah, well, if you have a breakfast, you have to have something <laughs> after work too, right? Not all of us are morning people. I am included in that bunch. Um, but it's a lot of fun. Um, we are we are going to have it at MGM Grand. And it's, uh, what, 6 to 9? Sorry. Yes. <laughs> May, May 6 to 9, May 22nd, right. which ends the million meal match. So yep. all of this, um, this work and these events really go towards that program program um, and the milk program overall. Um, and it's the same group of people um, or sometimes it's a slightly younger crowd, but it's for the people that want to network after work, get to know a lot more people. I mean, over drinks, it's a, you get a little bit more of a friendlier vibe, can rub shoulders a little bit more easily. Um, there's an auction um, at the event, which is pretty cool too. Um, we have a lot of great items that are available then. Um, anything from sports memorabilia to your spa packages and anything in between. So um, I also really love that event. Um, it's our fifth year. So um, 25 and five it makes sense, right? So come on out. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, so where can people find more information about the Million Meal Match or the Women's Power Breakfast? Yeah. So easily you can just go right online to womenspowerbreakfast.org and you can get all the information there. Um, we still have available sponsorships if people are interested, but you can buy your tickets um, right on, on the website. You can also call us um, at 313-923-3535, but um, going online is just so much easier for people. <laughs> All right. Well, Bridget Brown, Director of Development with Gleaners Community mm -hmm. Food Bank, and Luann Thomas Ewald, CEO of Children's Hospital of Michigan and a co-chair of the Women's Power Breakfast. It's a mouthful. It is. So, <laughs> thanks so much for coming by and chatting with us and uh, keep up the good work. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. <laughs>